Hey guys, welcome back for the start of the KW 900 Aerodyne. Stay tuned. To go over some of the materials we're going to be using along this build. I apologize if the top of my head is outside the shot. But for all unpainted parts, I like to use Tamiya Ultra Thin Cement. No cleanup whatsoever, sinks right into the parts, and it's a beautiful, beautiful glue. Also, I'd like to mention I am not sponsored by anyone or any of these products. These are just my personal choices and what I like to use. For all painted parts, I like to use Model Master liquid cement eats right through the paint bonds to plastic no scraping whatsoever except for chrome of course For all glass I use testers clear parts cement uh, For those of you who've ever built a model and you put in your windshield and then you notice you get a haze Around the windshield after the glue dries that's because the off gas from the glue actually fogs that clear plastic permanently and you can't get rid of it. Sometimes it's a nice cool little frosted look, however, that's typically not the look you're going for. So if you've ever had that problem, uh, it was the glue, not you. So feel better about that. Occasionally I'll use the little glue pen, not very often at all. And occasionally when I really need uh, a little bit thicker of a glue, something a little bit heavier, just the tried and true little testers, I usually use a toothpick to put that on. So we've got our toothpicks. Q-tip's always good and handy to have. Some needle nose pliers, some side cutters, tweezers, another set of tweezers, our X-Acto blade, which I like to use in Excel brand. Uh, it's got a rubberized grip so it doesn't slip in your hand. Uh, no chance of, well, there's always a chance of having an accident, but way less chance, much, much better grip. Uh, number 11 blades. Various uh, small testers touch-up paints. Uh, I typically spray with spray paint all my parts and then I like to, after I cut them off the sprue, I then touch up the color with the brush. But I spray them right on the sprue for the most part. Typically I'll assemble most of the engine that's going to be the same color and spray it all at once. Uh, various paints, various primers, and I'm 42 years old so the eyesight isn't what it used to be, especially for getting in with detail brushes. To paint certain parts and just put in certain pieces. Uh, got my magnifying glasses with a light and various lenses for those as well. One of my favorite parts of modeling is kind of like being a little kid on Christmas morning and that's opening the box to see exactly what we have. And then kind of start getting the ideas in your head where the shapes are going to go, what colors everything's going to be. I remember I was so disheartened as a kid when I opened up my first model and it looked absolutely nothing like the picture in the box. I didn't realize I had to paint everything and put everything together. I thought this was the toy. This was this is how it goes. Not the case. All right. I always love Ravel models, in my opinion. They're build qualities far superior than AMT just fit and finish everything all together and we've got the cab and sleeper all our plastics and frame chassis that big cat engine radiator fan all 10 tires not sure if we're going to do them chrome or match the body color yet. Oh, that big nose looks like it's separate, so we'll be able to open the hood. Fuel tanks. Covered rear tire mud flaps. Oh, excuse me, here's the fuel tanks. Smokestacks. 
battery cover steps, big chrome front bumper, grab handles, air horns. Not too much glass. Oh guys, I'm, I hope you're as excited as I am. Before we can actually begin and painting all these parts, we need to get all these parts unbagged. And what I like to do, and it's also recommended, is I soak my parts in some dish soapy water for a couple hours. Just gets all the any grease or residue that was left from the casting of the plastic parts and whatnot, and just gets them really, really clean, so that we can then start getting everything primed and getting everything painted. Typically, if I'm going to scrape or take the chrome off, I'll use oven cleaner. Uh, so I'm not quite sure yet what parts I'm not going to have be chrome yet, but whatever that is, we'll see in a step later on. So right now we're just unbagging all our plastic parts. So we can put them in a, this one's gonna require a much larger bucket than I'm used to using, as I haven't built a semi model since I was a little kid. I'll be making a trip to the garage, get a bigger bucket. All right, let's go get that bucket and get these soaking. All right, not a whole lot of brain surgery going on here. All our parts inside the bucket. Just drizzle a little bit of just soap in there. And fill it up with water and let it sit. One thing I wanted to mention is that bucket I'm using, despite it being a much larger bucket, I still have never used that bucket for anything. So there's been no cleaners or solvents inside that bucket. And the bucket I use for my cars is a much smaller bucket, just from the dollar store. You don't need anything fancy, but you definitely want to have a dedicated bucket for cleaning your model car parts. All right, guys, we're back. Now, the parts have been soaking for about two and a half hours, so now it's time, all we gotta do is just rinse them off. I put them on a table with a towel and let them dry overnight. So, let's rinse them off. <laughs> 